anyone more involved in microscopy knows that ponds are full of interesting microscopic creatures. Even in a tiny drop of pond water, you can find a huge variety of microscopic life. And if you have the privilege of owning a microscope, you can dive into this hidden world of tiny creatures. In this first episode of the Pond Life series, I will take you along and we will look at some of these pond creatures together. This is the pond from which I collected the samples. As a collection tool, I attached an old pill bottle to a telescopic pole with tape. I then put the samples in a waterproof container and carefully brought them home. Now let's see what we can discover in this pond water. This little critter can be found in almost every pond. It is a water flea. Its scientific name is Daphnia and it belongs to the crustaceans, so it is also related to crabs and lobsters. However, the water flea is not on the menu, at least not for us humans. Crustaceans do not have bones. They have an exoskeleton, which is a kind of shell. Here you can see this exoskeleton very well. It consists of chitin and calcium. This black and bumpy ball is the eye of the water flea. Water fleas have so-called compound eyes which means that one eye is composed of several individual small eyes. The long arms or antennae are used for swimming. These rowing-like movements are the reason why Daphnia is called a water flea. The movements are strongly resembling those of a flea. This is the heart of Daphnia. I slowed down the video footage, so you can see the heart better. This is the normal speed. The average heart rate of this little critter is 180 beats per minute. I am exhausted just looking at this. This creature looks a bit like a horseshoe crab, doesn't it? but it's actually a rotifer. If you've seen previous videos of mine, the rotifers you saw there were rather elongated. But this specimen from the pond has a very different shape. The elongated rotifers belong to the subclass Bedeloids. This one, which looks more roundish, belongs to the subclass Monogamanta and therefore has only one body segment. And here we have another crustacean. This is a copepod that can be found in both fresh and salt water. In a previous video I showed you a nopleus larva. Check out the video if you haven't seen it yet. A copepod develops from a nopleus larva like this. This copepod here is dragging around two whitish sacs. They are full of eggs and from each of these eggs eventually hatches a nopleus larva. The prominent red dot at the front of its head is its compound eye. Copepods play a very important role in the food chain. In freshwater, they are an essential food source for fish. Here I have discovered a microalga, a so-called diatom. These small, inconspicuous algae have a huge ecological importance. They are responsible for almost 20% of carbon dioxide fixation through photosynthesis. Diatoms in the oceans produce more oxygen than all the rainforests in the world combined. 
This huge thing is the larva of a mayfly. And yes, it's relieving itself on the microscopic slide. Again. It already happened in the previous episode, where a mosquito larva pooped on the slide. But I guess shit happens, right? Well, mayfly larvae spent their entire larval stage in the water. Here you can see their large compound eye. It is made up of hundreds of individual eyes, also known as omatidia. Each of these eyes consists of a lens, a cornea and photoreceptor cells that can perceive color and brightness. Very eye-catching are their gills. They have the function to absorb oxygen from the water. The vibrating movements that can be seen here create a kind of water flow. This constantly flushes fresh, oxygen-rich water to the respiratory organs. And here we have another tiny crustacean. This critter is an ostracod. It has a beautiful zebra-like pattern and grows to just the size of a poppy seed. It feeds primarily on microalgae. The specimen seems to be quite shy because it keeps hiding in its beautiful but also protective shell. It consists of low magnesium calcite. Small fish cannot eat ostracods because the shell is so hard that they cannot crush it. They are promptly sped out again and fortunately remain unharmed. Here you might assume that this is some kind of worm. But don't let the first impression fool you. If you look closer, you can see small, hair-like structures on its body. So this is not a worm, but a really long ciliate. To be more precise, this is a spirostomum. This critter is a bacteriwar and feeds mainly on bacteria. What makes Spirostomum special is that it can contract incredibly fast. Watch this! No other living creature in the world can do that so fast. Oops, watch out buddy, you're blocking your own way. Well I guess he never played Snake on his phone and if he did, he was rather bad at it. Now watch these whitish, bell-shaped things. At first you may have thought that they are grains of sand. But in fact, they are verticellates. Verticellates are ciliates that feed primarily on bacteria, which they can swirl up with their ring of cilia. They have a kind of tail which they can contract incredibly fast like a spiral. Oh, and here's the spirostomum again. I guess it likes being the center of attention. And we have reached the end of the video. Thank you for joining me on this microscopic adventure today. As always, I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you don't want to miss any new episodes, feel free to subscribe to my channel. See you, hopefully, next time.